Earwigs are truly remarkable creatures. They're small insects that live in the dark, moist places and decompose organic material. They have extensive parental care and amazing mating strategies. However, most people are only familiar with the myth that earwigs will crawl into your ears and eat your brains, or that mother earwigs will lay eggs in your ears so that the babies can eat your brain. Now this story is just that, a story, and it's not too hard to find out their actual ecology and behaviors. However, the more complex and interesting thing about earwigs is actually how the myth got started and how they became known as earwigs. So which came first, the myth or the name? Most people believe that the myth came first and the name came later. Essentially, at one point, someone's friend's mother's cousin's dog walker or mastodon walker knew a guy that got that weird bug with the pinchers stuck in his ear. This amazing story was told over and over again until the insect was going in the ears on purpose, then to eat inside the ear, then to eat your brain. As the story grew, more and more people came forward with more stories from their friends, mothers, cousins, dog walker. And soon this story became part of the passed down folk knowledge about these insects ecology. And eventually these insects were given the name earwig, with the name wig coming from the fact that earwigs were found in those crazy 17th century powdered wigs people used to wear. However, many entomologists tell a different story. They claim that earwigs were originally called ear wings because the hind wings of earwigs are in the shape of a human ear. The name was e then either misheard when said by a scientist with an accent or misspelled as a book was being copied down. The misspelled or mispronounced name stuck, but it didn't make sense, so later people came up with the myth to explain it, perpetuating the wrong name earwig even further. This explanation makes a lot of sense as many insects are named after the shape or texture of their wings, such as scale wing for butterflies or shield wing for beetles. Even the scientific name for the earwig order, Dermaptera, means skin wing based on the reduced leathery front wings. However, these explanations are not correct. At least there are some major gaps in both. It turns out that both the myth and the name are so entwined and have been around for so long that it is extremely difficult to figure out which came first. In fact, both originated far enough back that just about every Latin-based language has a name for earwig that can be translated into ear something, like ear pincher, ear worm, or ear turner, and so on. So let's leave all the stories and get into the actual science and literature of the name, the myth, and the legend. Most sources agree that earwig comes from the Old English arawekka, which means ear wriggler or ear insect. But every source has a different explanation on how the name started. In her paper, Lend Me Your Earwigs, Dr. May Berenbaum helps untangle the mess a little bit by diving deep into the literature behind the earwig name. According to this paper, the oldest mention of the name and the myth appears in the infamous Naturalis Historia by Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Elder is notorious for his several scientific claims in his book about entomology and really deserves his own future video altogether. Among other things, Pliny states that if an earwig infests your ear, you should spit in it and the earwig will come out. This is not only the first time the name, but also the myth is mentioned in any sort of literature. This idea caught on with later books saying similar things, though some offer alternatives to getting rid of earwigs in your ear, such as hemp juice. So I guess if you're a germaphobe and have an earwig stuck in your ear and you don't want to spit in it, this might be a better solution for you. So did Pliny the Elder actually have to remove an earwig from someone's ear? We don't know, but it is really unlikely. Many of his other claims in his books are also not correct, and to date there has only been one case reported in which an earwig was found inside the ear, and the report wasn't well documented, with the insect even possibly being misidentified. This lack of earwigs in hearing organs is not due to a lack of insects found in ears. According to several medical reports, cockroaches and beetles are the most common foreign objects extracted from the ears of adults. The general lack of earwigs in the ears 
was even pointed out back in the 1700s by George Lemon, who stated that in his research he couldn't understand where the name or the myth came from, finding no support for earwigs living in ears. So what about this idea that the earwig name comes from the shape of their wings? Well, while their wings vaguely look like human ears, this was not suggested until 1865, several hundred years after Pliny, by Dr. Cohen, who very simply and without any source, said that this must be the origin of their name. To date, he was the first person to say this, despite several hundred years of earwig literature before his time. It is therefore very unlikely that this origin for the name is true, though it is very fun to point out their wings to people who don't even know that earwigs have them. Now. If you'll go with me down a mole cricket hole, I also did a little research into the possibility of earwigs getting their name from being frequently found inside ears of grains, such as corn. Ear, as in the ear of corn, originally meant sharp, and was spelled in the Old English E-A-R instead of E-A-R-E -E, that refers to your ear. In addition, ear, as in ear of corn, came into use in Old English way later than ere, your ear or even Arawicca, earwig. So this interpretation still does not account for the earwig name, though it was a really fun suggestion made to me by someone who reviewed this. And so it seems that how the earwig got its name is a mystery. We don't know what inspired Pliny the Elder to write down what he did, or even where he got the name. But the misconception about these amazing animals persists throughout the world, and it has been part of us for so long that it has become part of many languages and even cultures. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more big facts about little bugs, consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. Papers I used are in the description, and you can find us at our website at bigfactslittlebugs.wixsite.com. Thank you.